Welcome to the OFA Online Virtual Festival launch. Uh, we're very excited to have everybody here. Um, I've got Judah here who's going to talk to you a bit about the festival as well and a bunch of special guests. Uh, Judah? Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This is obviously some brand new for a lot of people. Um, this is a new time, a new age, and we're very grateful that we have the tools to even do this. Uh, I just, I talk to people all the time and I ask them, can you imagine 15 years ago having to go through this with no internet connection? It's, it's hard to imagine. I'm sure we'd have figured it out, but I am very grateful that we are here on Zoom and we're able to uh, launch this digital festival. This is our seventh year as the Oakville Festivals of Film and Art. And um, we're planning on giving you the best films that we are able to physically get. Uh, obviously, with everything going on, there were some films that uh, we had originally received that were not able to do digital streaming. So that being said, we do have an amazing lineup and we're gonna go through some of those today. But we are so grateful that you're here. Some of the filmmakers are here with us and they're gonna to talk to us a little bit about their films and we're so excited to see what this, let's call it a hiccup or an obstacle is gonna allow us to do to come together. Thanks, Wendy. Excellent, thanks, Judah. Um, so first of all, we really couldn't have done any of this without a very dedicated board of directors and contractors. You just talked to Judah. Uh, we have Deborah Barlow, Christine Leonard, Eric Vidal's on the call, Dale Andrews, uh, Tori Nixon as well. And uh, am I missing anybody, Judah? I think I got everybody there. But uh, yes, we, we really could not have done all of this without everybody. And thanks to Stacy as well and all of uh, the contractors and people that are working with us as well to make this happen. We have an incredible, incredible 68 films for you, um, which is actually more than we've ever had. So um, we're pretty excited by that. The main reason is, is the amount and quantity of exceptional short films uh, that we have alongside our exceptional feature films as well. So uh, very excited about that. Um, Alita Rose is with us as well. You all know Alita from for film.ca hosting. And uh, Alita, I'm going to turn over to you uh, to, to start talking about the films. Okay, thank you, Wendy. Uh, thank you, Judah. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, it's my third year with the festival, and every year has been different. Uh, this year, by far, the most different. But, um, you know, it's strange times, but it's also nice that we have time to reflect and really appreciate being creative and the arts and everyone here is just giving anyone who needs a little bit of hope at home to be creative and um, just follow your dreams. So thank you all for being here and supporting that. Um, we've got some amazing films. We'll uh, begin with the little off uh, uh, intro, uh, intro film and then we will uh, take it away. So I'm gonna share the screen now. Here we go. Try that again. Oakville, we have more films than ever before. And it's all online. Join us June 17th through the 22nd for an amazing digital experience. Tickets are available now at alpha.ca. All right, so there's the dates, June 17th to 22nd, falls on Father's Day weekend. We've got some short films, we've got a family film festival, we have um, some directors, some Q&As, and also some talent that we'll be uh, chatting with as well. So it's online, but uh, you'll still get all the wonderful things from the festival as if you would in person. So starting us off, we have the local short film compilation. So this short film compilation is in partnership with the Sheridan alumni. So thank you so much, Sheridan, for that. Um, Wendy, did you want to say anything about the shorts? Yes, um, I'm really, really excited about this compilation. And 
to open the festival with it is perfect because we have a number of films, uh, half the films at least from Sheridan College, either from the alumni, the current film program, or people that have uh, worked with Sheridan. Um, really, really exciting. We have films from throughout the communities, Hamilton, Burlington, Mississauga, Milton, uh, and tons from Oakville. So it's just really great that we're able to do this. And we have most of the filmmakers uh, on for a Q&A following the film as well. So thank you. I see that we have uh, Amalia Williamson. She's uh in our chat right now. She'll be uh, doing part of the Q&A as well. Um, so the short films is going to be uh, really exciting. So that starts on the Wednesday. So that'll begin at 7 p.m. All right, moving on to Queen of the Morning Calm. This will start on Thursday at 7 o'clock, so June 18th. This one is in partnership with Kojiko and the Oakville Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we have director Gloria Kim with us today and we'll be able to chat with her a little bit later. Thank you for being here. Um, and here we go. This is uh, Kojiko in Oakville Chamber of Commerce partnered with the Queen of the Morning Calm. Did I ever tell you the story of when Daddy and I first met? Tell me. As soon as I saw him, I knew. I, I, oh my God, I'm busting my balls trying to take care of you and Mona. Just one more class and I'm done. Not pretty, but striking. You got glamour. Really? Glamour's worth more than pretty. It makes more money at the club. Great trailer, really looking forward to seeing that um, and looking forward to talking to Gloria a little bit later. So next up we have a Military Wives. Uh, this will begin on Friday, June 19th at seven o'clock. Um, this one is in partnership with Caps uh, Capstick McCollum and Associates. Uh, following the film uh, at 9 p.m., we're gonna have representatives from the Canadian Military Wives Choir, including Debbie Goldluff and Sammy Wilfridge from the Canadian Military Wives Choir Association. So that should be really uh, incredible. Um, here we go, here's the trailer. Are you going to be okay when I'm gone? My fifth tour. Of course I will. Of course you can. I'm Kate Barkley, Colonel Barkley's wife. Let's come up with some exciting activities to do while our service people are away. What about singing? Singing? Well, let's just get the strippers in. <laughs> this singing club is going to be a lot of fun and uplifting. And there'll be a few beers afterwards. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, uh, thanks very much, Lisa. That's lovely. It just reminds me of when my parents got divorced. I even play that thing without any music. Reading music makes things a bit stilted. Uh, I'm not sure Mozart would agree with that. One, two, three. Are that was like the incantations of a bunch of witches. It's a bit dramatic. If you think singing with a pole up your arse is what the women need, then you're more out of touch than I thought. Uh, more troops are being deployed to Afghanistan. I just feel sick all the time. Every time the phone rings, every time the doorbell goes. You may not need the choir, Lisa, but those women do. Dum, 
sometimes when I think of her name, when it's only a game, and I need you. heard you rehearsing and you've been invited to sing at the Festival of Remembrance. The big one on TV. This is going to be a disaster. This is a professional event. We cannot embarrass ourselves. What are you doing? Checking my heart rate. OK. Well, you don't let you choking yourself. There are going to be so many people like us with loved ones at risk. And I want to do this for them. If you're lost, I know it feels a bit much. But if we can survive the last five months. Five, five minutes out there. This choir is not like singing for ourselves. It's about being heard. Come and see. No, thank you. It's like childbirth. Best to be completely oblivious until it's happening. Hey, stay with me for more. All right, um, that's actually based on a true story. So I'm really looking forward to uh, watching that film and learning more about that story. Um, so starting on Saturday of the festival, uh, from 10 a.m. to 1, we're having a Caring for Our Climate film compilation. Uh, this is in partnership with Halton Environmental Network. Uh, so we have two um, amazing films. We have one called Water Be Damned. It's the world premiere. Um, it's directed by Vanita Khanna, uh, the writer-producer, and then Dr. Ramila Verna and Prab Kainth will be, um, well, actually, Dr. Verma is with us today, so we'll be getting to chat with her. And uh, this is the world premiere of the documentary, and we're looking forward to learning about water and the amazing things that it does for us. Uh, and the second film is Sockeye Salmon Redfish. Uh, this is the Canadian premiere, um, discusses salmon poaching and why it's so dangerous. Um, and every night, 700 kilos of sockeye caviar was poached, causing filming to shut down for a time. So lots of great things we're going to see uh, with, these, uh, with these two film compilations. First thing is that we are so disconnected from the spirituality and philosophy, uh, the ethical aspect of water, which is actually quite a paradox uh, because we need water. Water is life. It sustains everything on this planet and that's why it's a blue planet. Yet at the same time, the way we treat water, we not only disregard it, I feel that sometimes we don't even see water. It's kind of an invisible thing. We take it for granted. Awesome. All right, um, moving on from the compilation, we go to the great disconnect. Now, I think this one can be, will really hit home watching this, considering how connected and disconnected we all are during this quarantine. Uh, this film is in partnership with the CHCH. Uh, this is the Canadian premiere. And uh, we have producer, director, and co-writer Tamer Solomon and Sarah Douglas. So we'll be doing a Q&A with them for the festival. Um, this will be getting Saturday at two o'clock from two to five. And um, let's take it away and to see the trailer. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be, the happier we'll be, the happier we'll be. Happier will be. We have in North America, particularly, exalted personal independence to an almost godlike state. There is no higher value than independence. There is no higher value. There is no higher to an almost godlike state to an almost godlike state. Societies have become more individualistic, and people have been more concerned with themselves. People now entertain themselves alone, work alone, are more fragmented, more atomized. I think it's difficult to become part of a community when you don't really know the role that you want to play. 
you can feel lonely in a crowd of people. You can have lots of Facebook friends and still feel incredibly lonely. Social isolation uh, is the medical equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. It has the same impact on health as diabetes. There's so much change going on. I think it's very hard for a lot of young people to establish the kind of roots and community that we have in our minds about what a community should be about. The level of social isolation is very high. And right now, what I see, it's getting bad. It's going to get worse. Can we as individuals be both individualistic and communal? That's the challenge of our time. Well, how fitting is that, all this social isolation? So uh, interested to see this film and um, how it's so relevant to us, what's going on right now. So the next film is The Rest of Us. This will be uh, our night uh, screening at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, this one is in partnership with 100 Women Who Give a Partner Circle. This is the regional premiere. Um, it's starring Heather Graham, Sophie Milize, and Jody Balfour. Uh, we have two short films uh, before this film. It's called Men at War and Waters of March. There will be a Q&A to follow, uh, follow the films with the rest of us producers, Katie Nolan, Lindsay Tapscott, and director Ace Ling Ching. So here are all of the wonderful partners um, who are on board with this um, the, with the 100 Women Who Give Partner Circle. We have Her Halton, Women United, the Junior League of Hal Hamilton of Burlington. Um, so thank you everyone who partnered with this film. God. Okay. Thanks. How was that? Your father had a heart attack in the bathtub. And he drowned. I didn't even know he took baths. Don't let anyone make you feel like you owe them an explanation. Stand up straight, look them in the eye. Or kick them. Don't kick anyone. She ruined the place. I was just looking for the restroom. But hasn't moved since he lived here. What do you think the deal is with Dad's will? I'm assuming Dad didn't forget that Rainbow was his only daughter. Lula. Anyway, there's no telling from the outside what's really going on with people. He hasn't paid the mortgage in six months. It'll all go up for auction. The furniture, the house, everything. <laughs> Your friends? Not since I became a homewrecker. Do you need a place to stay? This is the worst thing you could have actually done. Roommates with my dad's mistress. I'm married to your father. I'm not his mistress. Yeah. Well, not anymore. Where's your mom? She's basically just staring at the wall of our camper. I'm a broke widow without a single marketable skill. I live with my husband's ex-wife and oh, special hobbies. Drinking with his teenage dropout daughter. Excellent. So to um, finish up the weekend on Sunday from 10 a.m. to 1 o'clock, we have a family fun shorts fest. This is in partnership with Visit Oakville. These are family friendly movies. These are going to be free for families to be viewing. Um, we have so many shorts, so many um, local shorts, for local filmmakers. Um, really exciting to have all these. Uh, Wendy, did you want to um, add something about the shorts that family fun? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're really happy to be able to offer uh, this family uh, fun shorts festival, all family friendly short films, a lot of uh, Sheridan animation, and most of the Sheridan animation uh, are, are all world premieres as well. So uh, there's everything from documentary 
to uh, animation, uh, some comedy, some dramatic, uh, but all really geared for families. And the Q&A that we'll be doing with this will really be geared towards uh, kids who want to be filmmakers. So different kind of event for us. We're really happy to be able to do it. Looking forward to that. So uh, in light of Father's Day weekend, uh, From the Vine is a celebration of dad's film compilation. This is in partnership with A71 Entertainment and Cashew Multimedia. I see we have Eric here on the call from Cashew. Hello. Um, so this is uh, the digital premiere of this film. Um, and it's a comedy drama. Uh, for the Q&A for this film, we have director Sean Cisterna, who's actually here today as well. Hello, Sean. Um, we have Joe uh, Pantoliano, he's an Emmy Award winner. You've seen him in a lot, Sopranos, The Matrix, Bad Boys, Marco Leonardi, uh, Willem Weckeners, and Paula Brancati, and we also have Ken Cancellara. So thank you so much for everyone. They're going to be here for the Q&A on Sunday on Father's Day, and we get to see From the Vine. This film is actually going to be um, a free screening for nursing homes and long-term care and retirement homes. They're going to have access to this film for free uh, for Father's Day weekend. Um, this is how Off is giving back, which is really wonderful that they can watch this film. It looks hilarious, and I can't wait to see it. Here's the trailer, From the Vine. A challenge. He's not like he used to be, you know. I can't remember what he used to be. I haven't been back in 45 years. I vigneti sono rimasti abbandonati da tempo fa. La gioventù è già di tutti gli altri. Sometimes dreams come true. But hey, but yeah, I don't know how to make wine. Does anybody know how to make wine here? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so we Google. We Google. Um, Awesome, looks hilarious. Um, next we have The Body Remembers When the World Broke Open. So this film is part of the National Indigenous Day screening. Uh, it's in partnership with Kakil Kalanik's Indigenous Consulting Co. Uh, the film will feature a traditional welcome address by the MCFN, the Mississauga of the First Credit Nation. Um, so this film, it's the, uh, sorry, not digital premiere, but it's got filmmakers L. Maja Feathers and Kathleen Hepburn to follow the screening. So we get to do a Q&A with them, which is wonderful. Um, it's starring Violet Nelson and L. Maja Feathers and Charlie Hanna. This film is actually nominated for six Canadian Screen Awards, including Best Motion Picture, and won actually a whole bunch for very recently. So really excited to have this film with us and um, excited to chat with you guys following the film. So for Monday of the festival, we will be having the Shorts for All Sorts film compilation, and that will be on Monday, June 22nd from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Oh, sorry, I'm moving ahead. Let's go back. We're gonna have to, we're gonna watch the trailer first for The Body Remembers and then we'll watch the shorts. I don't wanna be like one of those girls you know. Baby. Never you got anybody looking out for you, Rosie? Rosie! Rosie! I look out for myself. Do you know I love you so? He knows me the way that looks like. And mommy, we not trying to tell you what to do. Never let you go. Then what are you trying to do? To the stars, I'm just trying to help. In the sky, you'll always be mommy's little guy. Hey -o, hey -o, hey -o. All right, very powerful film, looking forward to that. And that actually falls on National Indigenous Day. So the screening for that will be on Sunday, June 21st. Um, 
Now, continuing on to Monday, at Monday night at 7 o'clock on June 22nd begins the Shorts for All Sorts film compilation, and this is in partnership with Film.ca. Uh, Film.ca is actually where we normally host the screenings for the festival, so sad we can't be there physically, but thank you so much for Film.ca being still one of our partners. Um, so the Shorts, we've got uh, not just local, but international uh, shorts. We've got filmmakers from Switzerland, from the UK, from Canada. We've got some uh, from Iran, Luxembourg, France. Um, lots that look amazing. We'll have a Q&A following the shorts as well. So we'll get to chat with uh, some international and some local filmmakers, which will be fantastic. Wendy, did you want to comment on the shorts for all sorts? Actually, that's what I was just going to say is that we have dedicated filmmakers that will be on a Q and A at around three in the morning for this. Wow. So it's really amazing uh, from all over the world. So really cool. So that's the really great thing about the digital festival is it's really the first really truly global festival we've been able to do uh, with worldwide participation. So wonderful. Excellent. So that, those are all the trailers. I just wanted to thank again, all of our supporting sponsors. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for supporting the festival, Film.ca Cinemas, Capstick McCollum, Eventive and Casio, also our grant partners. Thank you so much. Um, we have uh, many community partners who helped bring this to what it is and help us keep going. We have uh, Marigold, CHCH, Sheridan, Kojiko, Ace Coworking, Art House, um, Oakville Blue Printing. Thank you everyone, all our community partners, and thank you guys for being here. Um, we'll now do some Q&A. If anyone has any questions, let me stop sharing this for a second. There we go. So I'm going to open the chat function. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, as you can see, those trailers looked awesome. We have some amazing shorts and features that we get to see this year. Um, if there are any questions that you have already or you're a little shy, you don't want to ask personally, you want to put it in the chat, you can uh, do that as well. Um, Let's see, who do we have? I see Sean Cisterna from The Vine. Hi, how are you? Hello there. Really looking forward to seeing this film. Um, I'm from Portuguese heritage, so the Italian background totally hits home. And I was uh, saying to my grandmother how it's, it's interesting how it kind of skips a generation. I feel like my generation is trying to go back to the roots and garden and plant and, and find that community that we kind of lost touch with. So it's, I'm excited to see this film that they have to Google how to make some wine. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, we shot this film in Italy. So it's an international co-production between Canada and Italy. So it's uh, remarkable what two um, filmmaking cultures can do when we come together to, to make a, a project uh, come to life. And um, we had uh, Emmy winner Joe Pantoliano as our lead. You, like you said, you recognize Joe from The Sopranos and The Matrix, Memento. He's worked with everybody. Um, so it was a really great experience and uh, hanging out with him in Italy um, along with our Canadian cast and crew and Italian cast and crew. So it was a real blending of cultures to make this project happen for sure. Excellent. Looks amazing. Um, I, so we started with you because you're the one right beside me, but uh, I'm actually going to give everyone an opportunity to uh, introduce themselves. So Sean, before we move away from you, if you have anything else you'd like to share or, or say about the film before we go to our next cap. Uh, well, I don't know. We've, um, we've screened all around the world, so it was great to, to screen first in Italy, then we went to Spain, and um, all these different wine-producing regions across the world. Obviously, we were very excited to screen in, um, throughout the summer in Niagara, but we don't know if that's going to happen. Ideally, we'd love to screen in a vineyard and, and sample wine as we, uh, as we watch the film Under the Stars, but uh, life had different plans, so we're um, very proud to be um, able to offer this to our, our seniors in nursing homes and long-term care facilities with uh, with um, OFFA's help for sure. 
That's amazing. When I read that, I thought that was such an incredible give back. Um, and I think they'll get a, a real kick out of the film. <laughs> All right, um, so we can move on to, um, I can, do we want a volunteer who'd like to go first? Shall I call upon you? <laughs> um, Gloria, if you'd like to go next, Gloria Kim, the director of uh, Queen of the Morning Calm. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, would you like to introduce yourself, say a couple things? Sure, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Gloria Young Kim, and I'm the writer, director, producer of Queen of the Morning Calm. Um, I'm really thrilled to be at the Oakville Film Festival. The um, film was a 11-year journey in making, um, and we were really fortunate that we got the Women in the Director's Chair Feature Film Award that really kicked things off, and then, um, you know, it's been a really wonderful experience. I'm, I'm happy that we're getting to show the film, even with what's going on with COVID. So, um, yeah, it's <laughs> exciting. <laughs> Well, we're really looking forward to it. Um, you know, we're not, we are disconnected, but we're connected here and excited to have your film part of it. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. We have Tamer Solomon from The Great Disconnect. Hi, how's it going? Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm very well. This is awesome. Thank you. Okay. Would you, um, would you like to, to discuss The Great Disconnect? Because we're certainly feeling disconnected, but virtually connected. Totally. No, it's all. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. I'm the director, producer, and co-writer of The Great Disconnect. I'm, I'm so, we're so happy to be part of the, uh, of the festival. And I think just as the, you saw in the trailer, the film really just explores why we, we live in a seemingly connected world, but yet people are feeling um, social disconnection, uh, social isolation, and um, effects of, of loneliness. And in the film, we explore sort of what are the reasons that have caused uh, people to feel less community oriented and social isolation. And, um, you know, obviously we, we, we have some call to actions that would, um, uh, you know, tell you to, you know, make sure you're, you're getting together. And I think what's interesting about this, this time is that maybe uh, it's getting us to reflect a little bit and not take for granted that ability to come together um, and do all those sorts of things. And what's great about this is that it is, is the second best option to be able to connect in this fashion. Um, but not to forget that, you know, once, once we can hopefully get back, um, to see each other face to face that that uh, people won't take for granted but again we're super excited to be a part of this and uh, super excited to be alongside all these amazing films so thank you thank you for being here um all right we have i see leah williams here, uh, williamson um from i'm here um hi how are you? i'm good thanks how's everybody <laughs> well nobody can answer that oh my god um i'm good uh I Am Here was a really special project. It's the first short film I've co-directed. Um, the other director is here, Matt Long, from Atlanta. Um, it was a really cool opportunity to have four different schools, two from the GTA from here and two from Atlanta, come together and co-write, co-produce, and co-direct this film. Half of it was cast in Atlanta, half of it was cast here. Um, so it was a really interesting experience. Um, and a really fun way to end my last year at Sheridan. Um, Cameron, the producer, is also here. Um, if Cam, if you want to say anything, we can go over to Cameron as well, or Matt, or both. If you'd like yeah. to uh, chime in as well. Sure. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Cameron. Um, uh, I went to school with uh, with Leah, and as she said it was a very uh, interesting project and um, something very new for for all of us uh, not just myself Matt and, and Matt uh, and Leah but for everybody uh, you know for the professors that oversaw the project as well and um, I, you know I'll just uh, I'll just say you know I'm very grateful to be here amongst everybody and um, very very pleased to be among so many wonderful filmmakers and um, so many great trailers and I look forward to the festival so do we. Thank you so much. Um, Matt, did you want to say anything as yeah, well? Yeah, um, I also just wanted to thank you guys so much for uh, letting me be here, be a part of it. Um, honestly, I think it was such a cool experience being able to direct a short kind of from two different countries. I think it wasn't, wasn't something I ever expected to do in college. Um, and I think, honestly, I, it was such a great experience. And Leah and Cameron and the entire Canadian team were just, I mean, fantastic. I got to go up there for a few days while they were shooting and it was, it was just such a fun time. And I think we, we really put together a really cool, impactful story that, that 
I think will be to a lot of people. Excellent. That's so great to have U.S. and Canada working together um, and working far apart, but able to to combine your work. That's pretty awesome and kind of doing all that right now, aren't we? We've got yeah, it was a virtual great. collaboration. Amazing. You Even haven't before all of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right, moving on, we have uh, Sarah Gagne. I hope I didn't butcher your last name. Um, Very Sarah's close. Director of Cosmo. There you are. Hi. Hi, yeah, thanks so much for having me here. I am director producer of Cosmo. It's also in the top of the festival in the short category. Uh, super, super excited to be a part of the OFFA for the second year in a row, and even more excited to embark on this virtual version of it. So I'm just very excited to be along for the ride and uh, take a look at all of the really exciting work lined up. Well, thank you, Sarah, for being here. Um, it's uh, we're looking forward to all the shorts and all the features. It's great chatting with you guys here. Um, we also have Lisa Kohler from the Halt Enviro Network, uh, Environmental Network. Uh, she'll be here on behalf of Water Be Dam. This is the world premiere. Um, where are you, Lisa? Hello, everyone. Sorry, my camera Hi. is not on, not camera worthy this Monday morning or afternoon, I should say. <laughs> um, thank you so much for spotlighting and highlighting uh, climate uh, for our community. Um, we're really thrilled to have the world premiere for Water Be Damned. Uh, we worked with Ramilla, a professor at the University of Toronto, uh, for years regarding uh, water rights and equity around uh, water issues across the planet. So uh, it's very exciting that we are premiering her film, and I think it will speak um, to some of the current uh, challenges that, uh, that we pose, uh, not only for the climate, but for the environment in general. Um, also, we have some shorts from some local um, uh, film artists, uh, a really great production from a local Garth Webb uh, student that I'm super excited for everybody to see because uh, I, I feel that Katie is going places and uh, it's wonderful that we can spotlight some local shorts as well as part of our film festival. So super excited. Hope you guys will all be engaged and uh, have a different perspective of different environmental issues going on around the planet and in our own backyard. And you know what, it's, it's interesting that during this time, I think we are being more reflective of the planet we're on, where we're actually paying attention when there's garbage outside. And I think people are being mindful because they, I guess, have the time to pay attention. So uh, looking forward to learning about the film and, and seeing more that we have to learn about water. All right, so uh, is there any, did I miss anyone who, it's hard to go through all these pages of wonderful people here. Um, Wendy, is there someone that I've missed? I think you have everybody. I think okay. we have a couple of questions now. So <laughs> Perfect. Uh, you can either ask your question in the chat, everybody, or you can raise your hand function and we'll call on you. Just use the little hand function in your chat. I guess I have a question for all you filmmakers. Um, how are we going to be filming films moving forward? Um, I'm just thinking of I am here and how you were in two different countries and you were able to make it work. Is there going to be a six foot, you know, social distancing filmmaking in the future? Is that possible? Have those cogs been turning already um, moving forward? I think that's going to be really tough. <laughs> I think that's a question on everyone's minds right now in the industry. I, I don't, I don't know when things can start back up other than I think really small projects might be the only things that could happen with really small crews that could social distance. I can't see. And then any, together. <laughs> yeah. Like it's so tough to say, I think, the U.S. and Canada are having a tough time with trying to figure out when we can start back up again. And even romantically, like, who's going to want to kiss a co-star? You're yeah. like, oh, I'm not even so, supposed to hug my mom. So, so <laughs> hard. So yeah, hard. When you, yeah, when you think about how, how much, um, like, intimacy on screen that you see, not just, uh, you know, like, just closeness, right? Like, you know, yeah. not just the, the crews have to socially distance, but... Um, you have to write in a way that um, accommodates for 
you know, just holding hands or standing close to somebody. So, you know what would work though? A movie like, what was that movie that they filmed all on the webcam? The, there's a few movies like that actually. Oh, searching. Yeah. That would work. We could all just wear green masks and just green screen (laughs) everyone's mouth. Yeah. Everybody can change their (laughs) backgrounds. (laughs) <laughs> jump in. Um, um, sorry, we had some questions. Uh, Tyler's got his hand up. Tyler. Huh. Okay. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Tyler Collins, I'm with Oak Film News. Uh, to all the directors and the filmmakers today, thanks so much for making the time to talk to us this afternoon. Uh, I have two questions, if that's actually okay. Uh, my first is for Miss Kim. Uh, you were describing part of your experience taking 11 years to get the film made. How did that process of time influence the final product, uh, finally getting it produced and made? Well, it's interesting because when I first came up with the concept, it was while I was at the uh, Canadian Film Center's Director's Lab, Mm -hmm. and it was a short, and it was just a really simple mother-daughter story. And um, there was uh, the the mother, Deborah, the daughter, Mona, and the character, Ian. And I remember showing it to my mentor, Marlo Miazga, and who was the editor in residence there, and she was like, oh, Gloria, you have to make this, but this is not a short, this is a feature. And I went, oh, God, that means I have to write a feature. And so that was the process that I went through to um, like start to build out the characters and add characters. And so um, the romantic interest, the Sarge came a little later, and the friend Tammy came a little bit later as well. Um, but it was really just about building out the world and um, trying to figure out, okay, what do I want to see? What is this story about? You know, and wrestling with that and and trying to figure that out. And it was interesting because the I wrote, I was able to write the beginning and the ending, and it was the middle that was the hardest to write. And I think all everybody who's a writer or, um, will attest to the fact that act two is always the most difficult um, because you, you, you could go anywhere, you know, and, um, but you have to go somewhere that makes sense, that works with your themes. Um, and I knew that I really wanted to talk about what happens to um, women and girls when they're not properly cared for and, and neglected and how cycles of abuse and poverty impact you and, um, really impact the decisions that you make right and i wanted to be able to see it in with a caring lens but um it was it was a journey it was it was hard (laughs) thank you so much uh my second question is for mr solomon uh about your documentary sir can you talk about what it was the inspiration for coming up with the topic in the first place because i think the idea of social isolation was a theme on a lot of people's minds even before this whole pandemic started but what was it that wanted you to make this specifically A as a movie and B as a documentary? Yeah, no, it's a, thanks for that question. Um, well, it, you know, it, it initially, just like many documentary scripts potentially, um, is th- the concept came from literally we, I became good friends. And in the beginning of the film, when you'll see it, you'll see that there's this aspect of um, we go off into a Rastafarian community in Jamaica. And at the time I was living in the Caribbean. And so we had a relationship with a Rastafarian who can take us off into this beautiful uh, part of, the, of Jamaica. And basically, initially, you know, we envisioned beautiful cinematography of this Rastafarian community. And while we were there, um, what captivated us or captivated me specifically was how community oriented this um, group of Rastafarians were, basically. And so that, you know, that basically trumped everything else that we were trying to do. And then with a wellness background that I have in any sort of longevity book that you read. So any books on um, people who've lived the longest, there's always this piece in a chapter of the book that talks about how important it is to have strong social connections and community in your life. And as a result of that, you have, um, you end up living longer, you're happier and all those sorts of things. And so, you know, we just, the documentary just shifted away um, from this, this Rasta piece and it ended up being, a film on community and we were lucky enough to reach out to many, many of the top world experts on the topic to tell us um, that, you know, uh, you know, uh, the importance of social connection, but that we are sort of living in a time that's been described as the age of loneliness, largely because of just all these systematic things that we're, um, we've either involved ourselves in to create isolation for ourselves or just because just the way the world is um, has caused a lot of people to feel socially isolated. So the inspiration really um, came from this Ross community, but then, just knowing that it exists 
and then these these experts just I'm um, really guiding us through and then um, you know uh, coming up with 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 the film in the end. Thank you. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Um, Deborah has a question for us. Sorry for making you wait so long, Deborah. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, thanks to everybody who's been here. I'm on the board of OFA. Um, this is a general question out to all of the uh, short directors, really, you know, in as few words as possible, what advice would you pass on to new students who wish to produce a short? Anything come to mind? I got, um, I think, uh, I think the biggest advice I would pass along to someone younger uh, would just be to make something personal to them. Uh, um, I think if we can, or for me at least, I think whenever I try and put myself into whatever I'm creating, at least some aspect and, and I can kind of have that connection with a film. And I think having that connection allows me to care even more about it um, and allows me to be even more devoted to just the story and creating something that is impactful to other people because I think if I can bring something that I feel connected to I think it's more likely that someone else is also going to feel connected to that as well so thank you that's a wonderful answer I also have a question for Sean now this is kind of a fun question Sean in your journey what wines did you discover ah okay well <laughs> the wine uh, featured in the film is a little known varietal called Alianico del Vulture so it's only grown in this region in Basilicata where the, the film is shot in southern Italy. And it's wine that's grown in volcanic soil, so it has a really deep red smoky flavor to it. And the cast and crew drank a lot of that. Uh, <laughs> so highly recommended. Highly <laughs> recommended. You can find it at the LCBO on occasion. It's in the vintages section, but um, well, yeah, that's the type of wine only made in that region. So. I, well, we should actually post something on it for the viewing so that we can tell people to go get a bottle and sit and relax and enjoy this film. I'll type it in the, the chat here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I have a general question, and maybe this is more so that we get this kind of documented, but uh, for a lot of people, they might want to know how to watch these films once they purchase a package. So basically something to do with logistics. So maybe, Wendy, you want to take that one? I'm here. Sorry, just had to unmute. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's very different for everybody who's participated in the festival in the past because you come out to the theater and you sit down, you enjoy yourself. Um, there's wine and food and dance and song and all sorts of different things. But uh, what we've done is uh, we are up on an eventive platform, which means that everybody's films are uh, DRM protected and delivered. Uh, you can purchase tickets through our website. So you just go to ofa.ca, just like normal, click on the purchase tickets uh, button and you'll go to the event of site. You can purchase single tickets for $7.99. Um, the all access pass is $49.99. So um, all access allows you access to everything. We have a fact page. Um, I'm gonna post the link for the fact page as well. And that has all the instructions about how to get your films, um, how to watch them. You have 24 hours basically to watch your films. So once uh, the start time of the film uh, begins, then you have 24 hours. So you can watch the Q&A uh, live, or if you happen to join later, uh, you can screen the Q&A as part of a packaged uh, film screening. So you won't get to ask questions, but you'll be able to, to actually see the Q&A. So, it's a very good platform and you know from a digital perspective since um, this is how we're delivering the festival I think it's going to work really really well so okay thank you I'm done sorry does anyone else have any other questions uh, Sarah I think you were going to comment earlier about some advice for other filmmakers not to put you on the spot. I thought you had your hand up, no? Oh yeah, sorry, if, if, if there's interest in it, all I was going to say was the, uh, the, at least from the experience of 
my thesis project Cosmo in my final year, the biggest piece of advice or uh, learning experience was just to be flexible because things are going to go wrong and then they're going to go more wrong and then they're going to go even more wrong <laughs> and just to kind of embrace the wrong and let let whatever's hap gonna happen at least for documentary you know plans are important for other things but sometimes things are gonna go in a different direction than you initially planned for a doc and just to let whatever story is wanting to be told come out the flexibility overall well i think adaptability i think that's such important advice i think looking at right now in the state we're in we uh could call them challenges or we can call them opportunities and we can embrace change and i think everyone's being forced to be more innovative and of how they do things most people are out of work so they're like well i have to get a job doing something else so i think it's interesting we can look at it positively that we're all learning and growing and being at home not desired but we'll make the best of it and the arts is definitely one place we can do that does anyone else have any other questions oh judah i want to give some hope to filmmakers before we go judah yes oh someone had a question they can go ahead i'll i'll end off before we go so was it uh Hannah? did i see you had a question Me. I just had a question um, coming from someone who wants to be a filmmaker and is studying film at university. I'm just genuinely curious about anyone who can answer my question, I guess. Like, once you've developed a film and you've created an idea um, and you have the film, where do you go from that point? Like, where do you go to get it seen, to get it viewed by others? Like, what do you suggest to do after it's produced and filmed? Just start submitting to film festivals like Film Freeway is a really good um, platform and they'll just sign up. They'll send you festivals that, um, you know, they're featuring and then just look at the festival, see what their sort of mandate is, see if it sort of fits with what you're trying to say and just start submitting. That's what I would do. I would I'd also say partner, I'd also partner with an organization Thank if your you. film has something to do, like our has to do with wine, for example. So I, the original plan was to partner with wine regions across the, the globe. Um, and then, you know, my last film was about uh, figure skating and that had a, we partnered with Skate Canada, for example, and they helped promote the film in, in their respective organizations across the country. So if you can find like a hook in your film to partner with, um, someone to spread the word for you, that, that's also a beneficial way to get your film out there. I would say make sure too that um, when you're submitting to those festivals, a lot of them are free to submit, but work into your budget beforehand how much money you can put aside to um, spend on submitting to festivals that do cost something. It's usually not too much money, maybe mostly $50 for, like that's probably the highest um, amount that you'll pay, but you'll want to set aside a budget for, for submitting to festivals for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Wendy just shared that Cosmo was nominated for the Academy Award student film competition. Awesome. Well done. Um, for the, uh, where is it? The body remembers when the world broke open. Um, they just won a bunch of awards. So also congratulate Canadian film awards. Um, and if any other questions for anyone, anything they want to share, maybe some something they've been creating during this quarantine at home. <laughs> Found everyone's picked up a new hobby. People are tie dyeing clothes. I've definitely taken up gardening. <laughs> My baking's gotten a lot better. You know what? I'm trying to bake, but all the flour's gone in the grocery stores. Everyone in the area is baking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, is it you? You're just stealing all the flour. <laughs> Wendy's cooking, amazing. I just wonder if the future filmmakers who maybe they're making their first short film on their iPhone right now during quarantine and they can tell the story of, oh, when I was at home for, well, I was off school, I had nothing to do, finished all my online schoolwork, so I decided to make a short film during quarantine. So they're gonna have challenges that I'm sure none of you filmmakers had to face up until now, so it'll be interesting to see digital filmmaking and distanced filmmaking, I guess. 
I oh. wanted to say one thing. Uh, you mentioned making short films during the pandemic. We do have a short film that's been submitted called Once Upon a Pandemic that is screening with The Great Disconnect. And basically, Ryan Northcott uh, from Alberta created this film during the pandemic with his daughter. It's really, really good. And it's really an ode to the resilience of children who are in the position of having to deal with this, being stuck at home. Her mother's actually uh, got the virus in the short and is in a hospital, so she's communicating with her, but also just to parents who are being forced to become educators, psychologists, and entertainers uh, during this whole thing. And I think a lot of people on this call are in that position uh, where they've got young kids at home, and uh, they've suddenly, you know, they're in a position where they're home all day long and having to work with the kids. And it really is a, a, a different position for everyone. And uh, just wanted to mention that. So I love that they were able to submit it in time. That's awesome. <laughs> so if I may give some hope to the filmmakers out there, I know the big question is now, what's the film industry going to look like? And uh, I've been able to talk to a lot of people, executives in the film industry. And I don't know if any of you guys follow sports, but sport actually is giving a lot of industries a great example of how to move forward. A lot of the professional sports, uh, especially soccer in Europe, is actually moving forward um, despite everything that's going on. And they're giving us a model of how to uh, get the, pe the working people back into their industry. And that's by testing everybody before going in. And so an example of how we've been discussing this in the film industry is that everyone on set would be tested beforehand, making sure everyone's okay. And once you are tested, obviously it's a bit more complex and you know that you're safe. Everyone around you is safe. Everyone is okay. Of course, there will still be... Uh, uh, some semblance of social distancing. But all I'd like to say is that um, necessity is the mother of invention. As humans face new problems, we always come up with new solutions. So just grow with the punches. We will come through this. And I think there are going to be some great inventions and great ways to move forward coming out of this. Not unlike us doing a digital event out of thin air right now. Even if we have to show up in hazmat soup, so we're gonna, <laughs> we'll get that. I just, I'm talking about when, um, when we do, when we are allowed to hug each other, hugs are gonna be like minutes long because <laughs> we miss them so much. So, you know, we're in this time, but we're, we're gonna stay positive and we're going to uh, send love even if it's virtually. So anyone who needs love, give it to them, uh, be kind. And thank you all for supporting the arts. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for um, the partners, for all the films, the short filmmakers, the future filmmakers, and everyone who just decided to come, come out today. Uh, we love you and we love that you're supporting us. Um, Wendy, any final words from you? Yes. Um... I did not want to miss out to let everybody know as well that we haven't forgotten the film industry uh, through all this. Every uh, Thursday night at seven o'clock, we have a free industry event uh, for all the filmmakers, for anybody really who wants to sign up to learn more about uh, filmmaking. We have all sorts of stuff going on. Dale, did you want to talk a little bit about it? Sure. Um... Yeah, I've been in, in charge of the industry day the past couple uh, years and, and a little bit of a challenge this year trying to get everything kind of online. But um, this Thursday night, we've got a, a round table coming up with um, uh, Sean Buckley from Buck Productions, uh, was it Telefilm, um, Ontario Creates, and also who was the, oh, and- um, William F. White. Yeah, William F. White. So. Uh, that's a round table that's coming up um, this Thursday at 7. Um, we also have a, a really cool one coming up um, that we're hoping um, uh, you can join us for is uh, AJ Brioins, who is currently working on um, Avatar 2, 3, 4, and 5 with James Cameron. He's James Cameron's right-hand man. 
uh, and sets up all of the shots for Avatar. And he was also a special effects um, production coordinator for Star Wars Episode Seven. Um, he's going to be joining us for an hour long uh, discussion from uh, uh, Hollywood, possibly from New Zealand, because I know Avatar has started up uh, is starting up again in New Zealand filming. So he may be joining us from New Zealand if he's if he's uh, if he's there. So um, that's gonna be really cool. So every every um, every Thursday night, seven o'clock, we've we've got something for for people, and it's been really uh, interesting having everybody um, having everybody participate in that and um, seeing the filmmakers come out and really kind of get into the you know the industry talks and and all of that. So if you can join us. Um, you can uh, sign up for uh, all those sessions uh, through our website, right, Wendy? I can get. Yep. Yeah. You can sign there. up through the website, ofa.ca. Yeah, ofa. ofa.ca, and you can uh, sign up for that. That's all I have. Excellent. Thanks, Dale. Um, all right. Well, thanks again. Thank you, everyone. Um, if you want uh, a private interview, just let uh, Wendy know. Uh, thank you for your submissions. We look forward to seeing all 68 films for this festival. Uh, we'll see you guys in a few weeks. And stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good one.